Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about a Reddit post that a friend of mine shared with me quite recently, talking about a farming strategy that involved farming Einhar's memory of harvest beasts. What this memory does is provide players with a series of three maps where Einhar beasts are spawned into the maps, with a handful of them being harvest beasts instead of the regular Einhar beasts. The reason that people want to farm these beasts is due to their strong recipes that I'm sure some of you might have seen already, like rerolling synthesis modifiers or slamming metacrafts onto non-unique items. In the Reddit post, user Godsbow ran two sets of 10 memories for a total of 20 memories in his experiment. The cost of the memories back in 3.20 was around 3.5 divs each, and as you can see here, Godsbow was able to profit 5.5 divines from the first run and 7.2 divines from his second run. He mentions that this experiment was run solo and took roughly 50 minutes per run, so basically around 5 minutes per memory. If we take the average of both of his runs, we can estimate that he was making around 6 divines per hour. However, Godspell also mentions that the profits were kinda bad and that the memories were honestly overpriced. So to test out exactly why this was the case, my friend and I decided to buy and run some memories as well. Since this was basically a two-man rota and I didn't record profits my friend made on his end of the rota, I'll be reporting expenses and profit data purely from my side of the deal. So in total, I spent 12.6 divines to buy three Einhar memories. On top of running three of my own memories, we also ran three of my friend's memories. For those of you who don't know, being present in another player's memory will only give you a 20% chance to capture the red beast encountered. Across the six memories that we ran, I was able to capture four vivid vultures, four wild bristle matrons, eight wild hellion alphas, six vivid watchers, and three fenimal plagued arachnids. This gave me a grand total of 19.8 divines worth of beasts, which means I was able to profit 7.2 divines from the two man rota. It took us roughly 10 minutes to complete each memory since we were honestly just fooling around and not going that fast at all. And if we extrapolate that data, this strategy would yield a profit rate of 7.2 divines an hour. However, I'll now explain why 7.2 divines an hour is not a very accurate representation of what you can expect from this farming strategy. Aside from the obvious fact that our sample size is just way too small to draw any conclusions, I also have to mention that three of the four vivid vultures I captured all came from a single map. It goes without saying that this is a very lucky occurrence, and if we were to assume that these three vivid vultures just never happened in the first place, you'll see that our profits actually fall to as little as 2.7 divines for the hour that we spent. On top of that, in our last two memories, I only captured two vivid watchers and two wild hellion alphas. This means that for an investment of 4.2 divines, I was able to make a return of only two divines, losing me 2.2 divines in costs. And so what these numbers reveal to me is that across a much larger sample size, you might be able to see some profits, but the reason that God's Bow concludes that the profits aren't that great is because you'll often be running memories at a pretty significant loss before having a lucky encounter with many vivid vultures or bristle matrons to subsidize your losses. But why are these memories so expensive that you basically break even when farming them solo? And the reason for this is that people will typically try to farm these in a six-man rota. By hosting six-man parties to farm these memories, each individual will effectively invest in a single memory in order to reap the rewards of six. Even with the nerf to this strategy where party members only have 20% chance to capture beasts in another party member's memory, across a larger sample size you can see how this will begin to turn a fairly sizable profit rate for the time invested. However, I definitely don't think that this is the most groundbreaking farming strategy since it is largely reliant on a functional and time efficient six man party in order to ensure that every member isn't just breaking even on their investments. Even though I technically made significant profits from my test run of the strategy, I wouldn't be surprised if I were to repeat this same experiment again only to reveal that I broke even in my next three memories or even lost currency. And so that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you all next time.